Uh, welcome to my hike. I'm Kevin and today it's a perfect day to hike. I mean, it's not too hot, it's not too cold, it's not too humid, it's not too dry. And speaking of dry, today, right now, I'm hiking on a dry riverbed. And to me, that doesn't make sense, calling it a dry riverbed, because rivers are wet. And this is not wet, it's dry. So I think that's, that's the wrong thing to call it. But, I mean, you could have dry heat, right? But you can't have a dry riverbed. It's either a riverbed or it's a dry bed. One of those two. I mean, you can't go white water rafting on a dry riverbed, right? I mean, you just sit there. You wouldn't even, you would just sit there all day. I think, I, I think you know where I'm going with this. Okay, and you know where I'm going right now. That's right. So take your protein bill, uh, spray a little bit of that dry deodorant on your arms and why don't we go take a hike? Joining me on my hike today, my wingman, is a buddy of mine who I've known for a long time from the comedy clubs. He's a hilarious comedian. He's so lovable, you're gonna wanna just squeeze him. He's got a stand-up special out called Giggle Fit. He's done a lot of TV work and film work. Um, he does voiceovers, you probably recognize his voice. He's done shows like Bob's Burgers and the movie Trolls. I'm excited. He hosts his own podcast called Getting Better. And you know what? Your day's gonna get better right now because we're about to hike with the very, very funny Mr. Ron Funches. What don't people know about you? Um, what do you mean by that? I mean, what secrets are you hiding? Uh, <laughs> no, it doesn't have to be secrets, but you know, a little like, maybe you speak a couple of different languages? No. No? I mean, I'm pretty upfront. I don't think what most people know about me. Jeez. You're out, you got everything right out there. I try to, for the most part, yeah. You ever cry on stage? Mm, I think once, yeah, once I did. Because? I think I was crying because I, um, maybe I was talking about my son and he wasn't living with me at the time, uh, okay. so I was missing him. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. You work alone? No. Why not? Um, my wife, I never found one that I like and my wife hates smells. She does? She hates smells and she hates sounds. So you're showering a lot? I'm showering with your mouth a lot, shut. keeping it clean. <laughs> yeah, it's the quiet place at my house. <laughs> Do you see the quiet place? No, but I got the reference. <laughs> Are you a fan of these horror movies? No, I hate horror movies. You're not good with fear? I don't respect the genre. <laughs> Any other genres you don't respect? Um, no, really, just horror I don't enjoy at all and see no value in it. It's easy to scare me. Wow, good job. <laughs> I'm going to try and scare you before the hike is over. Okay. Is you just line? disappeared. It was scary. Is that a mountain lion? That's not gonna work. <laughs> so how is it now having a kid? I know you've got another son, but he's a little older. Yeah, yeah, it's a lot different because I, we realized on the way here today, I was like, oh, I haven't even seen my older son today. I should probably call him and make sure he's oh, alive. Yeah, yeah. And so it's interesting to have that faith that he can survive in his own. And now I have my little baby who, who needs me all the time, or mostly he just needs his mom. So he's, he's really needy, huh? He is a little needy. Okay. All right, which way are you going, Ron? Mm. I think it might be this way. I feel like, okay, well, all right. <laughs> yeah, we're deep here in the forest. But he just laughed yesterday. For the first time? Yeah. You finally had a good joke. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was good his mom. Me. His mom made it happen. Not really? Me. Are you sure it wasn't gas? It might have been. No, I know it wasn't gas. Because sometimes babies smile when they have gas. That's what people say, but this kid loves to smile and we're not gonna, we're not gonna take his joy and just put it on <laughs> gas. Mm -hmm. Did you guys have any problem with the baby uh, formula shortage? Um, not yet, mostly she, he's still just breastfed currently. And there's no breast shortage anywhere? No, not with her. If anything, there's a, a, a bre breast surplus, surplus right There now. is a surplus of breasts? Yeah. yeah. There's People a lot aren't of titty them. going around. <laughs> a lot of titty going around. <laughs> <laughs> so you lost your virginity what, like 15? No, 18. 18. Yeah. So she was not the first for you. No, she was. Oh, she was. It was a whole not great situation. <laughs> you have a special out called Giggle Fit. Yeah. And 
I've watched that before, and I just oh, I love your style. So cool. Yeah, I had to prepare for the hike. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I love your style. You get up there, and you are just so laid back, and you kind of take it easy. You let the audience come to you, basically. Mm -hmm. And you're not afraid of taking pauses, right? No. Long, long, long pauses. Because you're waiting for the applaud break. Yeah. You're waiting for the applause to stop. Yeah. Um, I come from early gigs of just performing at places that didn't give you the time of day. And I just kind of learned to be more comfortable in the uncomfortable. And sometimes yeah. I just wait for the amount of applause or laughter that I think it deserves. <laughs> yeah. And sometimes you work for a crowd and they don't give you the same laugh that other crowds have given you. And you know that joke is big. Yeah. So that's when I tell the audience. You guys are fools. <laughs> you don't know what you're, you don't know, I mean, anything to do with comedy. You don't know what you're, you're listening to. You don't know where you are. <laughs> you know, I don't take it personally. <laughs> you, get, you really get, you get tough skin, don't you, when you're doing stand-up a lot? Um, for the most part, I'm still pretty sensitive. Uh, I like to do well, but. Oh yeah, I yeah. I, I've come to the realization that I like what I do. And so that kind of... And people like what you do. Yeah. We'll be back after this word. See you later. <laughs> yeah, you ever do comedy in Europe? Um, I've, no, I've done comedy in Osaka, Japan. Okay, I guess open that's... Mic. Really? Yeah. You flew all the way there for an open mic? No, <laughs> I heard it was a good mic. Man, mic-y. you are heard really... Heard they had a booker there. You are motivated. <laughs> oh, we will listen to this podcast by Ed Milet. Are you familiar with Ed? Ed Milet? No. Yeah. What's he all about? He's all about unlocking your brain and taking emotions out of things and like just looking at things from a scientific and chemistry of your mind and your brain and uh, yeah. accomplishing things. Huh. Well, you know, I think happiness is really how you perceive things. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you could be having just a mediocre day, but then when you've heard that maybe you've kind of come into a lot of money, all of a sudden you're happy oh. because you're perceiving <laughs> you know, how great your life is going to be. But why can't you perceive how great your life's going to be without, you know, a lot of money coming in? Um, I think, yeah. Happiness is like a journey and a pursuit. That's why I think they put that in the pursuit yeah. of happiness. It can be a goal and it's an active pursuit where you, you know, your, your goals and your things shift at what will make you happy and not uh, always just, you know, career success and money. You yeah. can acquire it, which is great. And then you kind of, once I had a little bit of money, I was like, I'm lonely. So, <laughs> <laughs> You're never happy, man. I know. I know this for a fact because, I don't know, maybe six, seven years ago, you were more of a plus size, right? Mm hmm And then you lost all this crazy weight, man. I was I, Elaine Bryant. Elaine Bryant? No, Lane Bryant. Oh, like. <laughs> but, I mean, you got to be motivated to lose that much weight. I almost didn't recognize you. Oh, thank you. Thank you for not recognizing me. Yeah, it helps me, <laughs> helps me get away with more. What has been your biggest challenge to overcome? Um, my biggest challenge in life? Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, try to pick one out of the many. Uh, I mean, if I could wrap it up, it probably would have been being a, a you know, a beast teenager who with a child who was on special needs. Wait a minute, <laughs> you were a teenager when you had a kid? I was um, 19. He was, or I just Jeez. turned 20 when he was born. I guess you were pretty promiscuous then. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, me, I was killing me, you? <laughs> Oh, I was out, yeah, no. Just me and my high school sweetheart. <laughs> Man, you still keep in touch with her? Uh, no, preferably no. I came to your house mm -hmm. a couple years ago, pre-pandemic, mm -hmm. as they say. Old house, pre-house. Yeah. yeah, and I noticed that you were into something that I didn't know you're into. Mm -hmm. It's nothing naughty. <laughs> but, <laughs> but on your walls, was it like pro wrestling? Yeah, a lot of action figures. Yeah, action figures. That's what it was. Yeah, a lot action of pro figures. wrestling action figures. Yeah, and you've been collecting these since when? 
Uh, since I was an adult. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a long time ago. Yeah. Jeez. I love them. Um, I don't the... buy as many now, but you know. uh, I'm actually trying to get rid of some. <laughs> <laughs> well, the nice thing is you'll be able to hand those down to your son. Yeah, oh older. yeah, right into the trash, yeah. But you've got these action figures, but are you like a pro wrestling fan? Oh, I love pro wrestling, yeah. Have you ever gone to, uh, like the, what do they call it, the, uh, WFC, like, you know, what, did they have it in the stadium? I'm trying to figure out what WFC would be. World Federation of Cool Wrestlers. I love that. Now, what is it? What is it? How, what do they call it, wrestling? Uh, well, there's WWE. That's what I was thinking of. There's AEW, there's Impact Wrestling, there's Major League Wrestling, there's you, Ring of Honor. You do know your wrestling. There's G Grand Changer Wrestling. There's Combat Zone Wrestling. Okay, I get it. I get it. There's uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling. Okay, all right, all right, I know. There's That's... Stardom. Okay, I get it. I get it. Ever thought about maybe wrestling? I did wrestle. Wait a minute. When did you wrestle? I wrestled last summer. I had a match against a gentleman named Tony Deppin, um, and it was really fun. I trained for a few months. Uh, I had got in good shape. And I had a great match. I got a 20-minute match. It's on my YouTube. You. Oh, I want to see that. Check it out. So, did you have a name, like a, a wrestler's name? Just for my fun. Just, just me. Oh, just nice. keeping it all of one brand. You keeping know? it stable, man. Yeah, I say, hey, you want to see me wrestle? You want to see me do stand-up? Come by. <laughs> all right, man, I got to duck low because of the backpack. You okay, Ron? Yep. It's a good thing you lost that weight. Yeah. Otherwise, sure. you'd be going around this way. <laughs> So, yeah, I go over to your house because I'm doing your podcast called mm -hmm. Getting Better. Mm -hmm. And this is a great podcast. You know, there's a lot of podcasts now where they just talk about celebrities and stuff. Mm -hmm. But yours is really, it's got a point to it. It's on motivation, right? Yes. And how to get the things you want. About motivation and affirmations and just that, um, that there is no like making it. That there's a, always just getting better at your craft and what you're trying to do in life. And trying to be happy. Trying to be happy. And trying to recognize what you've accomplished. Yes, knowing and when you won. A lot of a lot of things. Just basically, it's a chronicle of whatever I'm going through at the time. <laughs> yeah. And it just came from a bunch of affirmations that I was doing at home with my son, with my older son. Yeah. I'd always wake him up and just be like, "Hey, you're before he goes to school. I'd be like, "You're strong. You're brave. You're kind. Have a great day out there. It doesn't matter if you make some mistakes." Right. Uh, and then I. When I was thinking about making a podcast, I just didn't want to make one that was, um, you know, there's a lot of podcasts, so yeah. I had to have a reason to do it every week. So. Right, right. When was the last time you drank Kool-Aid? Uh, also years ago, probably in my 20s. Yeah. Last time I had Kool-Aid. It's a real early 20s drink. When was the last time you had Jello? Uh, after I had surgery in April, so. This past April? Yeah. Huh. What was the surgery? Uh, I got, um, a tummy tuck from the weight loss that I had. I had a loose, bunch of loose skin and I didn't like it, so I had to cut off. Yeah. You were like one of those sharp hay dogs? Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> And I didn't like it because when I go do push-ups or work out, it made me feel like no matter what I did, it didn't matter. Look at those caves up there. Let's go a little further and then we'll head back. If we go any further than that, it'll be called a hike. <laughs> <laughs> your gums bleed when you brush your teeth? Uh, they used to, not as much anymore. <laughs> How are you with blood? I don't, I'm not a fan of it. I'm not looking for it. <laughs> You're not looking for it? Mm -mm. Uh-huh. I'm not good with it. I'm not super squeamish. If there was a serious accident on the freeway, okay, like a motorcycle, and somebody was laying on the side of the road, mm -hmm. would you stop to try to help? I think I would. I like to say that I would in my heart. But in truth? In truth, I think I would. <laughs> Well, if I didn't just rub up against something, felt rough. <laughs> <laughs> well, have you ever choke on anything? No, no. Would you like to? No, that's what she said? <laughs> that's what she said. Or is that what he said? That's what he said. Who said it? How many sneakers do you have at home? 
Um, at least 50, I think. Do you really? Yeah. I mean, these are pretty colorful, the ones we're wearing now. Oh, yeah. These oh, look are pretty those. basic every day. You ever think about being a fashion model? Sometimes, yeah. I'm more of a fashion designer. I have my own shoes. I'm, Do you really? Yeah, I designed my own shoes. No way. Uh, yeah. Are you wearing them right now? No, not right now. They're too white. They're too white. They're too... <laughs> hi, hi, hi. Um... I think they recognized you. I think they did they recognize, recognize your voice. They know. They knew. They were like Ron Funches and friends. <laughs> <laughs> did you drink in college? No, I'm allergic to alcohol. Why you get all fuzzy? Oh, and... there you go. There's something people probably don't know about me. What's that? I'm allergic to alcohol. What happened? You get all drunk? I get a, uh, <laughs> get a headache afterwards. <laughs> I get an anaphylactic shock. I projectile vomit. I can't breathe. So you need the epidural pen? I would if I drank alcohol, yeah. How did you find that out? I found out by drinking. <laughs> when was the last time you washed your car? <laughs> Let me see your scared face. <laughs> Let me see your sad face. That looks like you did something wrong. Let me see your excited face. <laughs> Let me see your face like you're going to kill somebody. <laughs> oh, Ronnie, 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 Ronnie. <laughs> what am I going to do with you? <laughs> you don't want to hear a, uh, a serial killer say that. Oh, Ron, what am I going to do with you? <laughs> that was a fun hike. Didn't I tell you how lovable he was? And did you squeeze him? You should have squeezed him, you had your chance. Also, who would have known that he was a pro wrestling aficionado? There's a lot of things you don't know about me either, so I don't get so excited. Thanks for joining my hike. Please subscribe, turn on notifications, and we'll catch you next time. Happy trails. <laughs> That's a beautiful sentence.